So what happened was I actually did the funding yeah. talent. Don't know, have you come yeah, up? I remember them. Bro, I, I done bad. I hate them. Bro, I done funding talent. And then they passed yeah. it in a day, one <laughs> trade. A second trade, I passed it in one trade. Bro, I made 65k on US 30 floating. Yeah. In a day. Welcome everyone to another Words of Wisdom podcast. We are back once again. We're back in London actually. And we're joined by the one and only Yarimi. Yes. Yeah. I'm wherever. How are you doing? Yeah, you okay? What's going on? Um, so we'll jump straight into it as always. And uh, like how we like to start is just to get to know a bit about you, your journey, uh, you know, how you got into where you are today. Yes. Yeah, so my name is uh, Yarimi. I'm 24 years old from London. Uh, my parents migrated from Saudi Arabia where they used to live. My mm-hmm. dad worked there for 25 years. Um, to provide a better future for us, they decided to move to Europe, as all ethnic minorities do, come to Europe, you know, mm-hmm. school, job, degree, whatever. And yeah, stumbled across trading in uh, 20, 20, I stumbled across trading in 2016, actually, mm-hmm. but I never took action until like late 2019, 2020, early 2020. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I've been trading, trading, been trading properly for about three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been aware of the markets, but properly, three years I've been trading. And yeah, that's pretty much a short introduction about myself, man. Short introduction, yeah. Now, obviously, you have a platform called Yarimi University. Yeah. And you you literally had a big event yesterday, yep. right? I just saw some uh, stories uh, that you put up on the Instagram page, and it was a full house. Yeah, full house. How many people did you have? Uh, 300 people. Wow. Yeah, wow. 300 people, uh, free event. Mm. And we do this every month. We don't, we don't charge a single penny. We don't upsell, and there's no catch. Yeah. And... Um, We'll get into the, the sort of nitty gritty of the journey then. So I know that trading wasn't like your sort of the first thing that you probably tried straight mm. off the bat. As you yeah. said, you knew of about it. Yep. But what was that journey like then when, you know, before trading? What were you doing? What was um, you getting before, up to? Before trading, I was selling perfume at a perfume shop, mm. getting paid £350 because I was young, obviously. Mm-hmm. That was the, the wage. Um, after that, I had to leave because they didn't let me go to Saudi Arabia to perform pilgrimage. Mm-hmm. So I had to leave. Um, and then I tried to find another job. I was doing camera work at the time. So I was shooting videos for a lot of different people, different mm-hmm. institutes, like um, some friends as well. Then I went to the UAE. I tried to get a camera job over there. Didn't really work out. Mm. Um, so I came back and I decided, you know what? I need, like, I, my life right now has no direction. I need to, it's, it's demanding more in terms of, I need to become more. I've always had high aspirations. I just didn't know what to do. Cause um, from an academia point of view in school, I did well. But I was not interested in academia. So it just led to me kind of just not really taking it seriously. Like got kicked out of college twice, mm-hmm. went to university, got kicked out, went back in, dropped out, just trying to make my parents happy. But um, eventually I had to take that risk and show them that this is what I want to do, you know, trading, trading, trading. But before trading, like just like the average person growing up, I've always um, looked at things that were that I deemed to be treasure when in reality they were glitter. You know, like all these people advertising lifestyles, like pyramid schemes, um, uh, like sales jobs. And like I, had, I applied for jobs on Indeed that said £500 a week. I went there and there was nothing. I hadn't I got paid. Mm. Been scammed a lot in the past before. Um, and yeah, just I feel like that kind of molded me and shaped me into realizing that trading is what I want to do because I don't have to speak to anybody. If I have a course, that's different. Obviously, marketing a course, selling a course, it comes with it. But solely just trading, I love the idea of it because it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the only job in the world that doesn't require you to speak to anybody mm. or meet a single soul. It's you, your phone, your laptop, the computer. It's just you and the markets. Mm-hmm. And you can just extract money by analyzing data mm-hmm. from candles, whatever it is. So it just appealed to me straight away. And I said, yeah, man, let's do this. And naturally, I'm just an impulsive person anyway. Mm-hmm. So whatever I do, I'm like, it's a bit scary sometimes because I'm like, do it now, face the consequences later. Of course. But I just went, I dived into trading and locked myself away, came off social media and I just grinded it out. And I said, I'm not coming back on social media. Nobody has seen me until I figure this stuff out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, man. So it's like that solitude, you know, I was actually saying it to someone, um, I think it was yesterday. Um, and I was basically saying that most people, when they find success is they take themselves away. You know, they take themselves away from everything, all the noise, and they just work on themselves. And then really those successful people come out later. You know, when it comes to social media or generally speaking about success or telling about their journey or what their plans are, the the right way of doing it is go away, do the work in solitude, 
and then come back after you've already started to achieve something or yeah. have achieved something. I mean, you could put lamb in a microwave for 30 mm -hmm. seconds or you can slow cook a lamb for seven hours. Yeah. No, I like that. <laughs> I like I'm trying to say. Yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, for sure. Definitely, there's there's serenity in solitude, man. I, I like there's, there's a greatness in isolation. And um, I feel like that really shaped me because, bro, like I was really at a very low point at the time. Mm. Grew out my hair. Never went to the barbers. I was back testing every day. Mm. And at the time as well, I'm trying to find out what method is it that I'm going to trade, what works. I'm putting like £100 into an account, blowing it. £200 into an account, blowing it. And I've got no money at the time, so I'm thinking, how long can I do this for before I'm out? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, that that journey there definitely shaped me into the person I am today, man. Because how did you manage that? Because you, you already know, did you know that you were an impulsive person back then? Or was that something you kind of learned after go, by going through that process? No, I already knew. Okay. But the dangerous thing with trading is that you think you can apply your personal characteristics into the markets mm -hmm. and not get humbled. So I'm here coming into the markets, not knowing anything about risk management, mm. having like 200 pound in the account, waiting for NFP. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Just full margin. The seeing classic. it wicking one way and realizing, oh my God, it's going the other way. Mm. So it, I was caught in that sort of habit, like um, not just news. I, I never really traded news, but there'll be one, two times where I needed money. Yeah. So I said to myself, how can I make this kind of money quickly so I can pay off my debts? Yeah. So I've got the bailiffs at my house. What, what, what can I do? So I said, cool, yeah, news is coming up. Let me try and utilize news to quickly make this m money so I can pay off my debts mm -hmm. and stop the babies from coming to my house. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would do. And I, I got humbled very quickly because I realized I can't be impulsive in the markets. And you know, one of the key um, ways to achieve an edge in trading is to master your own psychology, self-mastery. So for me, I literally had to write down all of my bad habits aside from trading, just as a person. Mm. For example, I don't like waiting in queues. I don't like being on the phone for too long. I've been, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I don't, um, if I'm hungry, for example, and my food's taking long, I get hangry. <laughs> Not angry, but I'm like frustrated. I'm like, oh, how long is it gonna take? Like I'll get a bit agitated, yeah. frustrated. Like, why is the food taking long? Um, I'm very impulsive. So if I see, I'm, it's, it's good It's good to have uh, being impulsive in terms of calculated impulsiveness, if that's, yeah. a, if that's a term. Mm -hmm. So if I, if, I, if I have an idea, I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. Like I won't sleep on an idea, I'll just yeah. do it straight away. It's ready to execute. Yeah, ready to execute. And that, I feel like that was detrimental to the early stages of my trading career. Because mm -hmm. I felt like I can just be me in the markets without having to pay a price. Mm. Yeah. So then obviously having to learn that the harder way. And, uh, you know, you mentioned about the bailiffs and being, having debts because that was something that resonates with me because I was in a similar position when I was trying and yeah. trying and trying. Was it something that you rectified first in terms of clearing those debts and sort of building that financial foundation? Yeah, yeah so literally any money I would make, I would try my best to clear the debt. But the, the debt was a lot. And what I was making in trading at the time, it wasn't enough to even clear the debt. Mm. For example, it was like in total, I was in about 12K debt at that time, mm. at that time time and it's not like I was taking loans it was just a lot of things building up for example like things that I was meant to pay off but because I didn't pay it there was an extra cost it mm. just adds up and they keep adding more and more onto it but for me it's like I can't I can't do this anymore type of thing and it's like at the time I was so locked in on trading but the debts were piling up so much like bro I literally whilst I was trading I had to get a job mopping floors cleaning toilets mm -hmm. for five pound an hour cash just so I can deposit it into my live account and start trading while I was having these debts. So for me, I never had pride or ego to work in a a job like cleaning, etc. Because for me, it's like, it's a form of humility, you know? It's a, it's a real job. People work these jobs, it's normal. There's nothing wrong with being a cleaner. Most of our families are mums or from, especially coming from ethnic minorities, you know, they're cleaners by nature, you know, mm -hmm. maintaining a household, etc. So for me, it was like, if this is what I've got to do, it's only going to make my story and if I really believe in what I'm doing, mm. which is trading, I don't care what it is. Like you can tell me to polish your shoes. If that's a job that's gonna feed my family, I'll make it happen. You know what I mean? So yeah, in terms of that, obviously that's immense self-belief, yeah. you know, believing in your vision. How did you sort of in that moment trust in that vision? What was it that sort of compelled you to keep going? Um, I feel like just my mindset in general, I've always I've always had a very resilient mindset with anything that I do. Mm. Anything that I do, I have full conviction I'm gonna get it done. However, I'm not unreasonable. If I know that I don't have the skill to do it, mm -hmm. I'll obviously be very realistic with myself. However, there's another side to me that will figure, will, I'll figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. If I can't figure out how to do it, I'll get somebody that's educated and I feel to sit me down and educate me. Because mm -hmm. there's two types of people that will never learn, the shy and the arrogant. And for me, it's like, I'd like to believe that I was never arrogant and I'd like to believe that I was never shy. 
from a young age I've always been outgoing I can speak to people mm -hmm. so I feel like that's what's also helped me in my journey just not being shy to kind of speak to people and just ask questions and learn mm. I feel like especially in the trading industry when a lot of people make money they feel like yeah that's it no one can chat to me no one can speak to me I'm this guy mm -hmm. bro knowledge is like the ocean it's vast there's no end to it yeah you think just because you've got a strategy on lock and you found your edge that you could no one can tell you anything do you know what I'm we was all born came out of our mother's wombs not knowing anything mm -hmm. so there's a there's somebody there's if you think you're the wisest there's somebody wiser than you yeah you know always yeah no 100 percent. and uh at the end of the day to get through those hard times if you don't believe in yourself if you don't try and be a sponge to soak up experience knowledge and uh actually go seek it because a lot of people they just sit and wait you know they're they're not active enough they're too inactive and they maybe let fear maybe let circumstance or just their mindset generally n in not knowing that you have to take action, hold them back. Mm. So with yourself, obviously you've taken action. You've uh, experienced these down moments, the, the impulsiveness and learning that you have to sort of mend to the market, mold to the mm. market. Uh, so what did that journey look like then in terms of getting from that point to you know, seeing consistency? Yeah, um, I feel like I hit a brick wall. Like I really, really hit a wall. I was very, very, very depressed. Mm. Like I went through some proper depression. Like I was very depressed. Um, more so at the fact that I can't settle for a job mm. because that's just, I feel like that's not what I was wired to do. Some people, we need people that work jobs, doctors, lawyers, uh, engineers, people that can make the society a better place, you know, mm -hmm. and um, elevate society. But for me, when I went to university, I studied marketing until I asked my teacher a question and she had to Google it. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say? So, so I said to myself, I can learn all this stuff online. We're like, why am I here? And at that time, I was very depressed because it's like I had dropped out of university, didn't know what I was going to do. You know, seeing people your age sort of move on in life, succeed, mm -hmm. probably like do well financially, land degree jobs, get married, have kids, etc. whatever it may be. Um, and then you just being in a bubble where you're living in your family's house, you've got nothing to your name. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure a way out, but it's like, it almost seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And that's the situation that I was in. Like, I was literally, bro, like, I never used to wear glasses. I've got glasses in my pocket now, mm -hmm. but only because they're blue light glasses. Okay. Like, I had to start wearing glasses because of all the hours I was putting in back testing. Mm. My mum would bring me food upstairs and say, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you eaten? This stuff's taken over your life. Like, I'd have people closest to me, I'm not going to mention, saying to me, why are you trading? Just give up. This stuff doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Like, just stop doing this. Like, people telling me you're going to end up cleaning people's shoes for a living. And all the stuff I used it as fuel. And this is why I say, like, you have to have a resilient mindset in life because not everyone's going to see your dream the same way you see your dream. Mm -hmm. They might have a macro lens whilst you have a wide lens. Mm. You can see the bigger picture. You can see, you know, where exactly you're going to end up if you carry on on this path they won't relate because they their mindset might be totally different. They might want to settle for a 95. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, like I said. But if you're somebody who wants more, mm -hmm. then you can't take in those words from people who don't have the same aspirations as you. So mm -hmm. in that time, I was in a very, very low position, doing very bad mentally. And I noticed that starting to affect my trading. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, like, I can either do the correct thing, which is to take a break. But at the same time, I know myself. Mm -hmm. It's like gym. One day you miss gym, at least the two, domino yeah. effect, three, four, five. Next minute you got a dad bod again. <laughs> you know what I'm trying <laughs> to say? Me, yeah, me yeah. Like, bro, trust me. Bro. <laughs> After I came out from Dubai, my belly gone. That's it. But I said to myself, if I take a break now, although life is at its lowest, like I would wake up after prayer, go to a forest and sit in a forest and deep life. Mm. That's how low I was. I was thinking, how am I going to make it out of trading? How can I do this? Um, yeah, it was a very, very self-reflective moment. And that's why I'm grateful up until this day because every day I wake up now and I look outside my house, I'm thinking, look at the position that I was in before mm. compared to now. But yeah, the way I'm, the way, the way I found my edge, I won't really like to call it consistency because as traders, you have good days, you have bad days. Mm -hmm. If you're keeping it real, like you have losing days, sometimes you have a losing week, you have a of losing course. streak. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how profitable you come out at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a problem with trading because a lot of people you know, come from a nine to five background like myself, like I worked in a DHL warehouse as well. I left at lunchtime because mm. I said, I can't be doing this. I'm a robot, picking things up, putting it on a conveyor belt. And loads of people don't last in warehouse jobs anyways. Of course. But mm. coming from that kind of background, 
onto trading and you're seeing like 5k floating profit or 1.5k floating profit in a day mm-hmm. 10k 20, whatever is it, whatever stage you're at yeah you're not content with that as if you've lived that life before yeah bro you've just come from a warehouse and you're out here watching floating profits of 1.5k or 2k or 3k mm-hmm. close that profit put it aside so that you don't have to go to work for two three months you can just dedicate that time to trading and lock in and if you're making uh, another another you know large sum of profits do the same thing put it aside so you can focus and you want to basically limit every single um every single factor that could be detrimental to your psychology mm. and a lot of it is what lack of money which is why people go back into the jobs then they miss london session they miss new york session yeah so if you've if you're in a position now where you've got somewhat knowledge and you're seeing flowing profits secure your profits put it aside so that you can focus on trading and you've got money there so for me um i don't understand why people act as if they've been making this type of money their whole life mm-hmm. the nine to five you know you're getting paid end of the week or every two weeks or every month why are you now coming into trading and not happy with your monthly wage in a day mm-hmm. or whatever it may be see what i'm trying to say no, apply the only thing you should in my opinion that you should apply to the trading game is the nine to five mindset when it comes to payday yeah because if you start seeing things for okay let me wait 30 days and see my results as opposed to let me wait two days or oh, losing streak forget this mm-hmm. if you start waiting for your payout you start waiting 30 days or you start seeing things from a business point of view from a percentage point of view mm-hmm. you will find an edge very 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 quickly compared to if you were to just try and make flips mm-hmm. or just look at it as a day's profit so the moment you start treating trading like a business you know and you start seeing your losses as business expenses mm-hmm. that's when trading will change for you and that's I can only speak for myself that's when it changed for me because mm-hmm. I was never someone who cared about percentages I used to hear people say oh why you ri-? bro I used to risk crazy amounts because I thought that was the correct way mm. you know what I'm trying to say because all I used to watch is these videos of YouTubers flipping money flipping yeah. flipping, flipping oh my god let me try a flip gone so the moment I started seeing things for percentage growth and treating trading like a business I started finding an edge I wouldn't say consistency mm-hmm. but I found an edge yeah and it's trading is all about finding your edge. Definitely, definitely. And it's uh, it goes to show, obviously, that the same blueprint, because obviously by now I've done uh, many podcasts, you know, and for the majority of people who've got that consistency now, it's the same sort of process. Yeah. Very different, obviously, yeah. of what they exactly experienced. But in terms of mindset-wise, it always revolves back to the edge. It revolves back to thinking like a business or in probabilities or focusing on percentage rather than money. Um, so it's an interesting sort of case study, if you will. Yeah. Like I'm, collect- I'm like back testing the psychology yeah. and mindset of journeys. Everyone's similar. Yeah, everyone's yeah. very, very similar. Obviously, everyone has little, yeah, um, you know, unique points as well, and obviously it presents itself slightly yeah. differently, but usually it revolves back to the same story in the end. And uh, during those hard times, though, like when you said you went through that depression, was that due to the you know, results or lack of in trading, or was it just generally life at that time? Everything, mm. literally debts, life. Um, you know, pressures from drop, just dropping out of university, mm-hmm. family pressures, um, not wanting to get a job because mm-hmm. I said, I believe in being impulsive, all in on nothing. Yeah. Um, and just focusing on trading, uh, you know, trading losses, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. Just everything, all boiled Everything one, combined, yeah. yeah. And uh, how, you know, talking about dropping out, uh, I know you mentioned that you got kicked out a few yeah. times. What was that? Why was that? Or? Attendance. Attendance. I just didn't, like, I, did not care mm-hmm. about I, I didn't like, this was not my path mm-hmm. even if it wasn't trading academia was never going to be my path which is why Still I tried that passion. yeah mm-hmm. like, I tried doing businesses and stuff and you know some failed due to lockdown and stuff but yeah like it just wasn't me it just mm-hmm. wasn't me that's it so like how did you handle that with your family for example because I can imagine they wanted you down that route yeah so I told my mum look I'm dropping out and obviously like she didn't take it very well <laughs> you know literally like you're from Pakistan I'm mm-hmm. from Yemen like ethnic culture we have the same approach to university yeah. you know what parents are going to do mm-hmm. oh my god what are you doing this that this guy got a degree this one's gone here this your cousin's done this <laughs> and this but it's like you know what I'm trying to say like um, I showed the conviction to my mum but she didn't really understand it mm-hmm. but I told my mum look give me one year give me one year and I'll show you, I'll prove it to you. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't really give me an option. She, did, she didn't give me one yet, but it's like, I had to just do it mm-hmm. because I, I I tried twice. I went to university. 
I got, you know, good grades in my uh, assignments and stuff, but it's like, I, I know I can do it and get a degree. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, this is the crucial years of my life. Why am I gonna waste three, four years? I'm 24 now. Mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, 22. What, the university is three years? Depends on your degree, but yeah. On my degree is three, four years, whatever it is, yeah? So if I'm spending three, four years, I would have been, what, 22, 23? having graduated mm -hmm. but now alhamdulillah like praise be to Allah I'm 24 years old and I've achieved every single goal of mine mm -hmm. apart from one which is to get married yeah well inshallah soon <laughs> inshallah yeah, yeah. you see what I'm trying to say yeah but if I went to uni mm -hmm. I would have had to start the entire process now of course yeah yeah that's true and like obviously you know that's because you had that well you already understood and insightful enough into yourself knowing that you didn't have that passion mm. Um, I'm sure if you did have the passion with that same impulsive nature, you'd probably be you know, going to that every day. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's not for everyone in terms of university, but it's also not for everyone entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. And I'm sure, have you come across people like that? Oh, in, for across sure. Across your journey? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's one thing I want to highlight as well, just because I'm saying, it's not like I'm anti-uni. I'm mm -hmm. very much pro-uni if it's your passion. Yeah. If you genuinely want to be there, bro, do it. Because at the end of the day, Steve, Steve Harvey says, he says, the problem with a lot of people is they try and follow their passion. Mm -hmm. This is why I kind of disagree with uni to some regard for people that are just there for no reason. Yeah, of so the problem with a lot of people is they feel like they should pursue their passion mm -hmm. when in reality they should pursue their gift. Mm. And your gift is what you should, and your gift is what you do that requires the least amount of effort. Mm. So the least amount of like, you know, pushing yourself effortless forward. you know when yeah. you just do something effortlessly and you're mm. good at it mm -hmm. that's what you should be involved in definitely so that's what Steve Harvey says in I took a huge leaf out of that um, and yeah um, so in terms of university if you know you genuinely have an interest for whatever topic you're studying do it man if you want to be a doctor that's amazing go do that mm. and yeah that's that's what I would say in regards to university so I told my mum I told her look man give me a year Trading, I'm, I'm doing. You, you're seeing me. I, mm. I swear, bro. I was putting in 16 hours a day, and of of like back testing, just watching different YouTubers like trading videos, mm. analysis. And I got caught up in, in 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 analysis paralysis, obviously, because it's like when you're consuming so much so much different content on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, you're trying to combine this and that and that and that. It doesn't work, so I had to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 the passion for trading that made me feel comfortable sitting in front of a screen just watching trading related content for so mm -hmm. long without feeling hungry yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's effortless like Effort, you were just yeah. the putting in that time in comparison to like you going to university yes. where you'd have to force yourself yes. and most of the time you didn't want to turn yeah up. and i'm someone who's not really like i can't sit somewhere for long mm. and take in information yeah but when it came to trading mm -hmm. bro like when it came to trading i feel like i've unlocked like a new studious me mm. because it's like why do I like sitting down, learning, taking notes all of a sudden? Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was amazing to see that. It was a bit of a strain. It was a bit like surprising. Yeah, yourself. very surprising. Mm. Very surprising. Yeah, but it was good. It was good. I loved it. That's no, good to hear. And, and you mentioned earlier about, you know, you've ticked off all your goals except for one. Yeah. Um, but I think, sorry, just to not sound like I've done everything. In mm. life, but as in, I've ticked off all of my goals for that period of that time. Period of time. So yeah. my, my early 20s, for example. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that's what I was going to say, actually. I was going to say, like, if you have, you know, ticked those goals off yeah. and you're still in your early 20s yeah. to, to a degree, like, what's next? Like, how do you motivate yourself or plan yeah. for the next phase then? Okay, the next phase for, like, uh, the next phase for me is longevity. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people come and go. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of people, then they fade. Yeah. So for me, it's like I'm trying to put together an infrastructure where myself, my trading, and Yerim University as well mm -hmm. can be known for longevity mm. you know what i'm trying to say yeah like i'm a messi fan people like cristiano ronaldo mm -hmm. because of his longevity of course yeah but technically i think messi's way clear of ronaldo <laughs> but i give ronaldo uh, i give ronaldo props for his mm -hmm. longevity mm -hmm. players like luca modric if you guys watch football people give them props for the technicals and their longevity mm -hmm. so i want Yurim university myself as well to have the quality in my trading but at the same time the longevity Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely. that's the long term plans then. Long term plans obviously moving abroad as well. Mm. Um I'm trying to move abroad, just get married, settle down. Mm. Just live live a comfortable life, you know? Nothing too lavish, mm. just being content. Because obviously yeah. people around the world who are in far worse situations than us. If you look at Syria, Turkey right now, there's people buried under rubble. Mm. And I'm talking about, you know, 
price for tracing and catching entries. Obviously, it's your job. Mm -hmm. You have to provide for your family. But yeah. at the same time, like, use trading to help people around the world. Mm. Definitely. So, yeah. so like that philanthropy as well yep. is in the yep. vision. Yep. And you mentioned about moving abroad there. Do you have anywhere in mind already? Or? Yeah, Dubai. But wow. even before trading, like I've always wanted to move to Dubai. Mm. Always. It's always been my dream from young. I went there with my family like twice. Mm. Um, yeah, it's always been my dream to move to Dubai. So after I started making profits, I said to myself, yeah, now I can make this dream a reality. Type of, of thing. course. And it's like, I have, I've gone there quite a lot with my friends on holiday as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it just, it just confirms, it just reaffirms the fact that this is where I want to be. Nice weather, mm -hmm. good food, um, amazing activities. You can just tell yourself, look, man, I want to wake up today and jump on a hot air balloon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just for being sake of being bored, go jet skiing, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, zero tax. It's, the networking opportunities are ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, everybody's there. Yeah. Everybody is there. And they're very open. Very you open. Know, comp compared to London, what I've found as well is that, you know, the people are very much, they want to stay in their lane or very, and rightfully so in one way, like cautious mm. or don't really want to be open. Yeah. But over there, it's like so easy. Yes. Very, very easy because it's like everybody that's in Dubai has one common goal. Yeah. which is to make it out, mm. okay? Or if you're in Dubai, you're already doing well, mm -hmm. but as in to take your business to the next level. Yeah. So everybody's trying to network anyway. Of course, you're going to come across, you know, relationships that aren't genuine. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you have to use your own psychology to realize, okay, you know what? I can sense this from this person. Let me keep it at arm's length, mm. kind of thing. Yeah. But on the other hand, like, it's, it's, it's amazing because it's a... It's a hub where everybody goes to. Everybody with a similar mindset to you is there. Yeah. Every entrepreneur is there. Well, majority of entrepreneurs are there, and um, you can just walk into something like I'm. I'm. I'm on a. I'm on the beach, and I'm stumbling into Kaka, Brazilian legend footballer. Mm. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm in a water park, and we're stumbling across Abamyang. We're chatting to Abamyang from Arsenal. Mm. I'm in um, uh, the gym, and I'm stumbling across this actor. I'm in the gym, I'm stumbling across that PT. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's very, it's amazing because you're bumping into people that you would not expect to bump into. We're walking, we see footballers. It's, it's, it's amazing because it's like, I feel like Dubai is one of the only places where everybody would give you a conversation because they don't know what your status is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can yeah. be in a, in a, in a plain white t-shirt and people give you a, people will give you a conversation because it's like, if you're here, you're doing well. Mm. If you look... Not even, you don't have to look the part, but if you're here and you've got the confidence to approach someone like that, automatically they're thinking, you know what, let me not even judge this guy because he can probably buy me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even like there's some restaurants that I've, I've, I've heard my friends uh, tell me stories of apparently there's a restaurant there where it's so like upper echelon, it's so bougie, whatever mm. it is, um, to the point where they only let you in if you've got like an expensive car and you've got like an expensive watch. Wouldn't surprise me, yeah. So... This guy pulls up now, I think he's in a, I think he's in a Lamborghini, Mansori or whatever it is, yeah? He's in a Lamborghini, he pulls up there. He's trying to get out of the car to go in a restaurant. They deny him access. He's denied, he can't walk in. Mm. And they asked, uh, he asked, why can't I come in? And they said to him, your number plate doesn't have two digits. <laughs> <laughs> so they imagine, have levels over there, yeah. You're thinking you've unlocked every level of life. Mm -hmm. uh, you're getting humbled because of your number plate. That's it. Yeah, so... Dubai it's interesting. Well, that's one thing Dubai teaches you as well is that there are levels, yep. you know, like here, you know, a lot of people come to Mayfair yeah. and then they're looking for the cars yeah. and they're, they're getting excited about that. But then over there, as you say, like the cars are kind of nothing yeah. at that point. Yeah. Now it's a different level, which you wouldn't even think of, yeah. which is the number plate yeah. of the car, you know, and there's probably a level above that that we don't even know. Yeah, yeah. like a G-Wagon over there is a Prius. Yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. But it's good. You know, look, some people will look at that and they'll think, you know, it's uh it's, it's too much, you know, yeah. we don't need this. It's, it's not important and uh, it shouldn't hold any weight. But then equally, it's it's bro broadening your horizon, you know, and it's trying to be around. It's as they say, your network is your net worth. And it doesn't always have to be like literally people you know. It's literally your environment as yeah. well. And, you know, it's just like when we see here in the UK, for example, when you're brought up in, you know, deprived areas and your environment is poverty, your environment is... Um, even crime or whatever it may be. That's why people get influenced in these ways. So when you then put yourself into, and you work hard to do it, into a situation, an environment of thriving nature and success and a hustle culture instead, it, it only will benefit you further. Mm -hmm. Have you found that when you obviously you've gone over there as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because uh, Dubai just ticks every box for me, like I mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like when I think of business, when I think of trading, no other place makes sense to me. Mm. Because also it's not too far away from culture. Mm-hmm. Like if I want to pray in a mosque, there's a mosque on every corner, oh, yeah. Fridays. And if I don't really want to be in the areas that are too touristy, yeah. I can go to the borders of Dubai, Sharjah, them sort of areas, mm-hmm. or I can go to like a, a gated community, a small, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. As you drive into wherever I want to You go. have that freedom. Yeah, yeah like if, if you want to raise a family, especially. Mm-hmm. There are many, many, many places where you can have a thriving family that are built upon, you know, good morals, good principles, mm-hmm. as opposed to making them grow up in JBR. For yeah. example, just by the beach where they're seeing every, like, you know, where it's active, where it's, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's less of that real life. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know? That's one thing people do say in terms of a negative, which I did feel because I was just there for about six weeks. So I just come back and I did feel that where it's mm. like, it's nice, everything's great, yeah. but then a part of it is a bit um, sort of man made, if you yeah. will. Like, yeah, it's yeah. a bit artificial mm. and there's not a lot of nature. So even coming back to the UK and it's cold. Yeah. You still you're seeing those trees, you know, you're seeing the fields, and you're thinking, oh, this is I missed this a little bit, yeah. you know, a little hey, bit of fresh. Yeah, no, definitely, well. every time I come back, I do miss the UK. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's one thing people struggle with, though. I will say is that obviously you have that goal to move there, and you're probably, you know, as you say, impulsive person. You know, you're going to do it. Yeah. Um, but some people, when I speak to them, they want to, they like the idea of it, and not just Dubai, but generally want to move. But they struggle because they say, my family's here, they don't want to move. Yeah. You know, and is that something that you've struggled with or sort of battled with? Um, I wouldn't say I've struggled with it, but it's something I do think about mm. if I moved it. Because I've been to Dubai many, many times, but it's like every time I'm there, it's like, can I do this mm. for, for for a number of years? Just being, not that I'll be alone, obviously by then I'll be married or whatever, but can I do this being a, that far away from my family? Mm-hmm. But obviously with trading, you can just fly in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's there's no limit on what you can do. Like you can just fly in every two weeks, every month, and I'm gonna have to come back anyway because of my students. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah so. Of course. Well, you n- you never know. People might try yeah. and co- oh, follow yeah, you I'm there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we found. Like I did a meet up there in Dubai, and I had more people attend that meet up than the ones here, which are closer to home. Crazy. You know, and I think there's just something about Dubai, especially for not just traders but entrepreneurship as a whole. It's like this mystical oasis. Mm. You know, and it's uh, an element of like fantasy and and uh, obviously you know just good times that people probably feel more motivated to go there yep. and go to a meetup yep. or just go there generally. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's no surprise. Uh, it's no surprise whatsoever. But in terms of your journey, then let's revert back then in your journey, you had those down moments mm. and you know, what style of trading did you find that helped you? You know, uh, day trading, day trading, day yeah? trading yeah, yeah. So day trading in terms of strategy. Mm-hmm. I've pretty much tried every strategy there is in the world. Yeah. You know, just trying to find your feet in trading. Mm-hmm. But then I came across uh, supply demand. Mm-hmm or order blocks, whatever. It's sort of the same thing. I know, yeah. Sort of same thing, yeah. So it's, yeah, supply, demand, order blocks, um, and just trading, like, liquidity. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I came across, and I found that's what works best for me. And before, I used to be a win rate trader, mm-hmm. but now I'm f- more focused on risk to reward. Yeah. And the moment I started applying risk to reward to my strategy, everything just became, my psychology became better because it's like, cool, if I lose two trades, three trades, whatever it is, I know that the next, the, the trade that does, you know, go for a runner mm-hmm. is going to be the trade that makes back the losses plus profit mm-hmm. so it's like it gives you that sense of um room to not panic you can just chill out yeah only if you follow your rules of course if you have your trading plan your trading journal and you have your rules and you stick to it and you stay disciplined with that then mm-hmm. yeah, risk to reward for me is definitely one definitely yeah because it's something that sort of opened my eyes i never really thought until i started learning that style of trading like the order blocks supply and demand yeah. Uh, I never really thought about risk to reward. I didn't put much weight on it mm. at all. And there is an element where I feel like some people do get too fixated on risk to reward, yeah. but it's definitely something that you should keep in mind because mm. at the end of the day, if you know, in terms of probabilities and an edge, if your risk is lower on all your trades and your reward is higher, yeah. naturally, yeah. it allows you even to lose more than you win. So like you said, obviously focusing on strike rate, now you can change that to focus, as you say, on risk to reward. So yeah. you know, it's really good to hear. Now, when you first came across that strategy, because yeah. as you said, you went through the others, when you first came across that strategy, did you have a sort of a moment where you struggled um, with, you know, sort of, you know, the the the, the enticement, you know, of like order blocks or supply demand, you know, like, oh, you can enter here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, support. absolutely. Because it's like, if you, if you were to look at, a, at any chart, mm-hmm. you'll find so many supply and demand levels. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking, yeah, if this hit stop loss, I'm entering from here. Yeah. That hit stop loss, I'm entering from here. Mm-hmm. That hit, like, there's, it's it printed everywhere. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, okay, cool. Why do I keep getting stopped out even mm-hmm. though I'm trading this method? Mm-hmm. 
So I said to myself, there must be something more. Until I realized, okay, cool. There's certain things that validate supply and demand zone. Yeah. Or there's certain things that you should look for. Take a look at liquidity around it to potentially show you. Obviously, it's not going to be a hundred percent, but you can, you can, you know, um, try and have as many confluences as possible as to which supply or demand zone, which order block is the best to take the trade from. Yeah. Being realistic, because sometimes you may see a huge impulse move take place in the market an order block left very, very close to the impulse move, you take it from there when in reality there's a cheaper price all the way above that you've missed out on. But the only reason you entered from the first one is because you didn't want to feel like missing out FOMO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you were too scared that you were going to miss the trade. You were going to miss the profits that everybody else is making. Yeah. That everyone else is sending to a group chat, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, for me, it was just being very realistic of with how the markets move and understanding the market cycles and understanding that the market has its own behavior. You know, sometimes if, if it's been moving all day, it's got to come a point where it starts to chill out and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, consolidate or retrace or whatever it may be. And um, for those, uh, yeah, so like you have to understand how the market behaves. Like it's going to start accumulating or distributing before a move takes place. Like it's going to it's gonna behave in a certain way. The candlesticks will move a certain way before something takes place. You will never 100% truly know what's going to happen. But mm-hmm. what you can do is build your list of confluences mm-hmm. for why you believe this will happen. Yeah. yeah. So you start to build that narrative, that yes, story. The story. And then you can still be wrong, but at the end of the day, you did your due diligence, you were mm-hmm. patient, you didn't just jump in. I'm um, sure, was that something that you struggled with in terms of you know, that impulsive nature? Was there a time where you just jumped in and um, then you just kind of had to Yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning yeah. for sure. There was times I, I just jumped in, but I feel like the moment, um, so in my, after my first year, mm. after my first year, the like I started seeing results from trading, risk to reward, mm. supply and demand, order blocks, etc. So yeah, after my first year, that's when I started seeing reward. But but in the first year, it was yeah, it was it was bad. Mm-hmm. Very very, I lost everything in my yeah. first year. It's not easy. No, it's yeah, not easy. Definitely not easy. And that was that was that was before I came across prop firms or anything. So I lost yeah. grants and grants and grants and grants of my own money that I was mm-hmm. putting in, cleaning toilets, mopping floors, getting that cash, putting it into a trading account, losing everything, until I came across risk to reward and I started mm-hmm. journaling and I started understanding why my psychology is the way it is because of my bad habits, writing down, why am I like this? Mm. You know, why am I being impatient on the markets? Why am I acting as if I make four or five grand a month from my day job? Yeah. And, you know, when I see four or five grand floating, I'm not trying to close it because I feel like, yeah, because it's trading, I'm Mm. treating it differently now. Mm. Bro, it's real life. People have real life issues they need to solve. If you're seeing that much profit floating, take it home. Mm. Take that profit until you fix the situation where four or five grand can now become, you know, an average day. Mm. You can be grateful for that. It's just and like the levels. Yeah, just the levels. Yeah, so move up in levels. The problem is with trading, people see the possibilities and they want to go from here to here straight away. Mm. And it don't work like that, man. It's, it's a journey. Life is all about the journey. So, yeah, I feel like after my, my first year, it was very, very bad. My second year is when I started seeing results. Mm. And you mentioned prop firms there. So... You know, in that second year, did you still use sort of a personal to begin with, like your personal account to I've begin with? I've always used a personal account. Mm. So I've, I was just adding to my personal account. Okay. However, when I came across prop firms, I didn't really feel like I was smart enough because mm-hmm. I thought it required so much like from trading to pass a prop firm exam. So what happened was I actually did the funding talent. I don't know, have you come yeah, on? I remember them. Bro, I've I, done, bad, I hate them. Bro, bro I've done funding talent. And then they, firm, Passed yeah. it in a day, one mm-hmm. trade. The second trade, I passed it in one trade. Got the live account. Um, bro, I made 65K on US 30, floating yeah. in a day. Furthermore, let me show you one second, yeah? Because I want I really want to show you this. Gmail, I asked for a withdrawal from the 65K. I was, I was up 75K on total mm. account, but just for that trade, I was up 65K on US 30, yeah? Um, here we are. Uh, funding. Talent. Whilst you're getting that up, for those who don't know, Funding Talent was a prop <coughs> firm and they were quite popular at one point. And uh, I had my own story with them where I got max funded with them. And then the week after they decided to close down their their funding, uh, their funding uh, sort of aspect branch of the of the prop firm, you know. Literally, so it's just Funding Talent support withdrawal account number. Mm. 
Hi guys, I saw the email regarding the changes. I would like to request my first and final payout of $72,229. I would like to receive it in Bitcoin and I'd like to ask where do I send my address to and when can I expect my payout? I was looking forward to working with you guys, but your new model doesn't fit my trading style. The Account same number, time, yeah. kind regards. And that was September 30th. So they paid me out £1,250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they from, changed the model to like... 72k. What was it, 5% or something? And what they did was they said the latest withdrawal um, date is this day, this time. Mm -hmm. And I submitted the way before. But because I submitted quite, obviously, a crazy amount, 72k, mm -hmm. they were trying to brush that to the side. And they only replied to that after they, they closed. Yeah. But for them, I wasn't even annoyed. That I'll be, I was annoyed, but I, I didn't really take it to heart because I was like, you know what? What this has done for me is like, I can't put it into words because it gave me so much fuel. And mm -hmm. that's when I became like a beast in the markets. Like I really became the best possible version of myself mm. after that happened because went with MFF, passed straight withdrawal, withdrawal, withdrawal. Mm. You know, and it's only 3% of people get to the withdrawal. So for me, it was like, if that situation didn't happen, I don't know if I would have been... I pushed yourself. Yeah. Did it give you that fuel then to push yourself further? Yes, yes, because it's like, I held that trade for nine hours. Mm. And my friend was telling me, yo, close for 50K. I said, no, I believe in my analysis, you know? So I still had, I still had elements of like, it's cool, I'm up 50K. I'm gonna wait for it to go to 80K. That was my overall TP. But once it took some liquidity at 72, at 65K to trade, um, I took profit because it was like, let me not be unreasonable here. Mm -hmm. 65K in a day, I've never done that before. Let me take it. But it's a shame that I wasn't able to get that payout from them. It's the same time, yeah. So that, that's exactly what happened to me. I, I just got max funded with them. Yeah. And what I did was I passed 100K and I was like, okay. They, and I did uh, one payout and I was like, okay, this uh, they seem legit. I had other students who were getting big payouts as well. I was like, yes, yeah, it's legit. So let me get max funded. So I spent a little bit of time getting the max funding. Soon as I got it, the week after the same thing happened, they just changed the model, so changed all the rules. Company. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. That was a crazy one. But that, you know, it was a reminder to me as well in terms of prop <laughs> firms as a whole, like whether it's FTMO, MFF, whoever it is, yep. they have in their rules that they can change their rules whenever they want in every contract. Yep. Yeah, will they do it? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. But the reality is, and this is why, as you said about personal, yeah. it's so important. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the prop firms can decide at any moment to shut down, change their model, mm. or just say that you we're not going to pay you out. Yeah. You know, which exactly. uh, which is why, like with Eureka University, I say to people, learn, apply, get funded. Mm -hmm. and after you get funded, and you get to that withdrawal, put that money in your personal account. Mm. Essentially, you're putting it aside for a rainy day, for example. Okay, cool regulation. Okay, mm -hmm. I think FTMO they're regulated, right? Are they regulated? I'm not sure. I don't think any of the problems are. To yeah, be I'm not sure. Um, but I heard something about FTMO undergoing something. I'm not mm. sure, yeah. But um, this is why I say, when you use the prop firms here, mm -hmm. use it. Utilize the prop firms, put that money into your own trading account mm -hmm. and keep on doing that. Have it, treat your personal account like a pot. Use the prop firms, use the capital they're giving you, trade, withdraw, put it in. Withdraw, put it in. If you lose an account, no problem. Take another challenge. Mm -hmm. To pass it again and do the start the same process again and use your personal account to, to eventually if you've got 50k in your personal account 30k 100k 80k whatever it may be that's now a good amount to start mm. with because now you can see percentage growth on your personal account because yeah. if you've got a 30k account and you're risking one percent what's that 300 pound mm -hmm. you're risking one percent 300 pound you catch a, a a one to ten for example that's 3k you catch a one to five 1.5k and that's you know, that's more than- That's what people don't realize, people yeah. People don't realize that. So once you start to grow your personal account to the point where you're content with what a 1% risk is, mm. that's when you know, okay, cool. Let me just trade my personal. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, you know, a lot, I feel like the prop firms have those benefits, of course, in yeah. terms of the funding, but then the negatives are is that everyone kind of just completely ignores mm. the actual journey of a trader is to have that full control, you know, that freedom. So yeah. that the, Though you have this prop firm account and though you know the rules and regulations, you're not free because you have these rules and regulations, whether they're stopping you from uh, holding a trade over the weekend or whether they're stopping you from trading news or whether um, you know you have to take a profit split at a certain day or you have to do minimum trading day, all these different rules. So you're not essentially free. Even if you're funded, you're not free. Yep. But that fun personal account, you're free. Yep, because you know? for me, it's like, I like holding trades overnight. Mm. I can't do that if I'm on a prop firm. Mm. Because I, with, with the sort of lot sizes I'm trading, 
within a one percent risk, it's like if that trade now retraces whilst I'm asleep, mm. I violated my daily drawdown rules. Yeah. So I like to do that on my personal account. Definitely. Definitely. And, and just uh, day trade on my portfolio account. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So, like, is that something you do? You sort of treat the strategies differently depending on the account yeah, you're yeah. using? Yeah. Because, over, like, before, I was more of a, like, a intraday trader. Mm. And I feel like the only reason that changed was because I came across prop firms. Okay. Yeah. So I, I still kind of intrad like I'll hold trades on my personal account, mm -hmm. but on my prop firm account, I'll just treat it what it is for the day. In and out, in yeah, and out. In and yeah. out, yeah. But to be honest, it's not even like, I don't really get in and out a lot. I'll hold a trade for like maybe four hours, yeah, five, yeah. six. Oh, as in like just uh, the yeah. day's yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the day's move until it hits TP mm. and that's it. Nice. Perfect. If, and if it hits stop loss, then I'll just have my rules for the day. Mm -hmm. Like how many percent, how much percent am I willing to risk for the day? Yeah. If it's 2% for the whole, for the entire day, then I'm out of the trade, I'll come back the next day and see if there's any opportunities in the market. Yeah. So how did you sort of stick to that? Because a lot of people set those rules. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, losses. Mm -hmm. Like I lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It forced me to have this method in, in, in practice mm -hmm. because it's like, if I don't have very strict risk management, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I know my personality. Definitely. You're going to start making up fake biases in your head. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see this happening, so it's here, and this is why I'm um, taking profit over here, and this is why I'm going to hold the trade for longer. Mm -hmm. When in reality, you just want to make more money. So you're making up these, you're making up fake analysis mm -hmm. to basically make you feel better. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And it's like- To just justify these yeah, bad actions. Yeah, like I'm moving stop loss to break even because of this or whatever. And that's what I used to do until I heard Mark Douglas say that if a person moves their stop loss to break even, then they truly haven't accepted the risk. Mm. And people have different strategies, obviously, like you move your stop loss to break even after price break structure, bro. And this is the problem with the trading industry because it's like everyone thinks there's one correct method. Mm -hmm. Bro, you can trade retail, institution, or whatever. You, like, bro, if you're, whatever method you're trading, if you, you have correct risk management and you've got a trading plan, you can become successful with whatever it is, mm -hmm. okay? Will you be as successful or as consistent? That's another conversation. But like, someone might move the stop loss to break even and still be successful. Yeah. Someone might not and still be successful. It all depends on the nature of the person. For me, I realized that, you know what? My psychology gets affected knowing that if I move my stop loss to break even, price comes back just to tap my entry and then continues in my direction, I'm gonna be annoyed. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather just accept the risk and keep my stop loss where it is. Yeah. Because it's like, if I know I'm, annoyed that my stop loss got hit is because I, I, I didn't risk correctly. Mm -hmm. Because if I had a thousand pounds on my bank account or I had a hundred pounds in my bank account and I lost one pound, I wouldn't be stressed because I've got 99 pounds in my bank account left. Mm -hmm. So why is it not the same with my trading account if my stop loss gets hit? Mm -hmm. An element of it is number one, disbelief in your own ability to trade mm -hmm. or number two, bad psychology because you're trying to, you don't accept, you, you always want to be right. You don't want to accept the fact that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And when you are wrong, or when you feel like you're about to be wrong, you try and justify why you're about to be wrong by using fake analysis to pull out of a trade. Yeah. You haven't fully committed yourself to the trade. I see, you commit start trying to, to justify it. Yeah, like commit to the trade, set, like set, set, set your trade and forget about it. Just lock your phone, get about your day. Mm. People forget that this is what trading, this is the nature of trading. Trading is meant to allow you to live your life mm -hmm. and not just sit in front of a screen all day just preying on potential moves in the market. Yeah. The market's only gonna move at certain times. The market's only gonna move a certain amount of pips in a day. Why are you chasing more? Mm -hmm. If you've just made a, an amount that's, that you're grateful for, that you're content for, call it a day, call it a week, take mm -hmm. a break, enjoy your profits, man. You know what I mean? Definitely, and did you find that an element of trading, obviously it has all this freedom. And as you said, you don't need to meet anyone, you don't have to, you know, have stock, for example, you can literally just do it from your phone, from your laptop, by yourself, yeah. you make all the decisions. Yeah. So you have all this freedom, but do you feel like having all this freedom is probably a reason why people yes. just take a hundred trades? It's detrimental because it's like, it, it desensitizes them to the value of money mm. because it doesn't come. Obviously the hard work, this is why trading is like football. You dedicate your entire life to trading, taking free kicks, taking shots, being on a diet, going to the gym, tracing, uh, training twice a day, to then becoming a professional footballer. Mm -hmm. And trading is the same. You de dedicate hours of back testing, learning a method, trying to practice your psychology, being in the markets, having down days, quitting, coming back, quitting, coming back, mm -hmm. blowing accounts, coming back to finally going after you finish the, the journey of the cycle of a trader, you realize, okay, cool, I'm, I'm at the consistency curve or I'm, a, I'm at the curve where I found my edge. Mm -hmm. Then the market starts rewarding you. Uh, but 
does it desensitize a lot of people? Of course it does, because they start. You just see mom- numbers on a the screen. They're numbers not, on the screen. They're not physically. See, if you had that yeah. cash in front of you and you, mm. you saw how much floating profit you was in, yeah. you'd be very grateful. Yeah. Because you've been seeing it time and time again. You don't feel like it's real money in front mm-hmm. of you until you actually close it, withdraw, and you're like, damn, that money actually came into my bank. Yeah. Crazy. So, and it's like what I, th- I think it was. Um, I can't remember who it was. If it was LeBron, uh, if it was Michael Jordan, or um, Kobe Bryant, they said something like. So he knows Usain Bolt. <laughs> he said, I trained years and years and years of my life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to run for what? Eight seconds, nine seconds? Yeah. It's true, that. It's true. And that nine seconds made him the most money ever. Mm. So do you think like you're training, so like with the football analogy or even with Usain Bolt, it's like you train, you have to do all these different technical aspects. So it's not just like, oh, I just learned to sprint. You know, you have to you know, prepare and, and practice the, the takeoff, you know, and then the actual sprint speed and then, you know the the po you know the the sort of uh, physicality of it. You know, making sure that the form's correct to mm-hmm. optimize the speed. Same with like the football. You're not just going to learn how to shoot the ball. Yeah, you have to learn how to get to that point where you can shoot the ball. Yeah. You know, like the defense, the your cardiovascular, yeah. your diet, etc. So like with training, you got the back testing. You got all the you know reading the candles, learning a strategy, training plan. Do you feel it gets to a point though once you've gone through that process of that learning and you know losses and mm-hmm. experience that you have to strip it back? you know, and simplify and make it so that you have limitations now because there's, at the end of the day, you can have all the freedom in the world to yeah. do what you want, yeah. but human nature being what it is, and especially revolving around money, do you think it's actually, maybe you can reflect on your own journey, was it something that by stripping back and putting these limitations in place, mm. was that what helped you to excel? Absolutely, because it's like, before I used to place a trade every day, mm. I used to get in three, four positions in a day, mm. in and out, in and out, whatever maybe, yeah. Um, and when I say getting in multiple positions, it's because like one hit stop loss, two hit stop loss. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to justify that there's another move when in reality it's just me trying to make back the losses and revenge trading. Mm-hmm. Um, so putting limitations has definitely helped me out because now it's like I'm very picky with where I enter. I'm looking for the best prices. I'm looking at, you know, what's furthest away from traffic. Mm. Um, and I'm not interested in areas that I believe a lot of people are entering the markets from. Mm. And yeah, I'm very, very picky with my entries and I'm, I don't really place as much trades. Maybe I'm, I'm in, out, in and out of the market maybe three, four times a week, sometimes twice a week. Mm. Um, but yeah, just let those positions run and that's it. It's about being grateful as well, man. I feel like I can only speak for myself um, because of like faith. Mm. My religion teaches me to be grateful, to be content. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's like, if I know I can't make this type of money anywhere else, and I know what this amount of money that I'm floating in profit right now can do for me, can do for my family, can do for my loved ones. I'm taking that profit. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to search for more and more and more because as mankind, we're always going to want more anyway. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's, ha- it's about having a good balance between um, knowing what you really want from trading, knowing mm-hmm. what you want from life. And if you're up a good amount of um, profit, close it and do what it is you've had dreams of doing. For example, if you want to help your mum like, for example, refurbish a house, buy a car, invest somewhere, take your profit, do that, come back to the markets. Use trading as a money-making vehicle to now invest in other opportunities that can generate you income aside. I don't want to use passive income, but yeah, diversify your portfolio, basically, and use trading as a vehicle that's going to allow you to do, that, to do so. Definitely, definitely. And I think uh, what you mentioned about gratitude there, regardless of religion, I think it's people, things that people do probably struggle with. Because yeah. as you said, in the moment, like, the reason, sorry, the, the reason why I mentioned religion mm. because like I had the Wolf of Wall Street mentality. Guys are losing trades, yeah. going and sniffing cocaine in the toilet, mm. getting frustrated. That's why I feel like for me, religion is what puts that gratitude in me. Mm. For some people might be whatever else it may be. It could be something else, yeah. yeah. No, 100%. But it's true though because a lot of people, I think trading as a whole could be a huge influence because people see that sort of lifestyle, you know? Uh, a lot of people can't promote that on social media, for example, but they see people who have the lifestyle similar to the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. You know, and the Wolf of Wall Street, in a way, did you know, present a particular lifestyle that a lot of people then thought, oh, this is wild, this is crazy. You know, be able to do a private jet with a yeah. party. And, you know, people then create this unrealistic expectation and they have the wrong mindset of why they're trying to achieve something. Um, and yeah, religion to a degree does help you to sort of not avoid that, but give you a, a different path to choose from. Direction. Yeah, direction. Um, but what I was trying to get at is in terms of like the gratitude element, 
Uh, a lot of people, I think, as you mentioned already, that they have a, a nine to five and they may be, may, may be making like £1,500 a month. So suddenly now they're seeing these different figures on the screen that is actually more than that in a sh way shorter time. And I think in the industry as a whole, we do see a, a, a lack of focus on the gratitude, you know, on, on the situation that you're in and the situation that you're creating or possibly being able to create through trading. And, you know, you've taught a lot of people now, like, have you found that in other people as well? And would you say maybe it's something that the, the younger generation face or just generally people face? Yeah, I've definitely found that because I sometimes in my Discord, I, I kind of have that um, realistic uh, mentorship approach. Mm. For example, the other day someone said, um, oh, damn, I had a losing week. And I said to him, literally, if you get paid 3K at your job, mm -hmm. that means you make what? Uh, 750 a week? Roughly. Yeah. Roughly, 150 pound a day, something like that. Anyways, I'm not too sure. Um, if you clocked in Monday morning to your job and you made 150 pounds, are you going to finish your shift saying, damn man, I only made 150 pounds today? Mm -hmm. Or you finish that week and say, oh, this week was bad, I made 750. You wouldn't say that, why? Because you know at the end of the month, 3K awaits you. Mm -hmm. Why can't you apply that same mindset with trading after having a losing day? A losing week all it takes is a few trades to bring you back to break even mm -hmm. and one or two trades to set you in a good amount of profit if you were to only think how am i going to end this month mm -hmm. you would be so much more calm as a trader because you're now thinking ahead you have that delayed gratification instead of instant gratification mm. you see and that's a problem with a lot of us because we come from a job and now we're not grateful for the profits that we've seen on our screen because it's daily like and sometimes it's like because we're used to working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we now think we have to trade Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of just bring the same mentality over to trading, but we yeah, can't. We can't. You know, we have to do different and dive deeper than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like a lot of people, <coughs> and now we're starting to see a bit of uh, a bit of a stronger narrative around that. But there's still a lot of people who have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and. They, they need to dig deeper into themselves. Like yourself, like you, you know, based on what you've said already in terms of how you reviewed your thought process, you know, you asked a lot of questions. Why do you react in this way? Is that a process you've always done or was that something you started to implement trading? Yeah, start to, trading made me implement that mm. because before I would never self-reflect. Mm. I just think this is just my personality. It's how I am. I don't need to change. Don't change for no one. <laughs> <laughs> I had to change for the market. Of course. Yeah. That's good though. But like when you had that moment with um, funding talent, yeah. so obviously this is like going into that second year, going into yeah. that consistency, you've just had all that hardship yeah. and that depression. Yeah. How did you then look at that scenario and say, okay, I can, you know, and use that as fuel because equally you could that, have used the other side. Yes, I was so low, bro. Like I was so low in that moment. Mm. And I've just been denied a 72K payout. I'm not going to lie. I kind of, I kind of, I was annoyed for a bit. Mm -hmm. Then I just laughed it off and I said, watch, this is, it just woke up a beast inside me. And um, yeah, after that, <clears throat> gave it about a, I gave it about a month mm -hmm. Then I went with my Forex funds and I passed, made a withdrawal, was up 20K on US 30 in like four hours, gold up 20K. And there was a moment where I literally, I was, I was seeing 10K floating profit every single day mm -hmm. without fail. That was like, I was, going, I, was, I, was on, I was on a very, very, very good streak. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that fund and talent situation gave me so much fuel because I went into MFF, I went into all these other prop firms um, with the mindset of, yeah, I'm going to scale up and scale up and scale up. And it made me realize that one account isn't enough. Mm. It's not enough because what if... Bad, uh, bad losing streak yeah, happens yeah. or the again, the yeah, same scenario same happens. Sorry, no. Yeah, exactly. So... Obviously, in your journey, you use the prop firms, and uh, obviously that was a huge shift, though, yeah. from being in debt and losing small accounts to now having larger payouts. How did you handle that? You know, um, I feel like it's good because I conditioned my mind. Like I said, I was watching a lot of like traders on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like I was watching, not in terms of strategy, just in terms of like lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I was watching Swaggy C. Mm -hmm. I was watching Q Banks, mm -hmm. Lambo Raul, Mamba Effects. I was watching. Um, 
I like I like I like Will's effects a lot, man. I feel mm. like he's he's a young guy. He doesn't really get the credit that he deserves, but he's never been a flashy type of trader. He's always very real with his psychology, and mm. I like I like kind of is that less is more approach. Less is more approach. Mm. Um, very business approach he's got as well. Um, I was consuming every single possible trading content out there. Mm -hmm. like, like some crazy guy. What's his name? I think his name's Raphael or something. This guy's flowing like 1.5 mil on mm. gold, and he's like, "Oh, I'm about to blow this up." Whatever. I don't. I don't know. Some people are legit. I don't know yet. I yeah, can't speak for them. Yeah. But it's like watching other traders float in profit, like seeing Q Banks make what 250k in a day, 100 100k in a day, whatever it is, and seeing them guys. You know, Swaggy C for me was like a mindset mentor. One hundred percent. And if I if I ever see him, like I'm gonna make it known and give him his flowers, man, because he really did change my life. Mm -hmm. He that guy changed my life. Swaggy C, that guy mm -hmm. changed my life. Um, and I used to watch Swaggy C when I had minus six pounds in my bank account. Mm. And now I've got a penthouse, McLaren. You know, I'm living the life that I used to watch them live. Mm. And it's thanks to all these people, like, you know, even people that I, I listen to, Les Brown, Steve Harvey, mm. you know, Eric Thomas, these people like I always condition my mind because it's like as human beings, we are told to have a five a day mm -hmm. for our body. Mm -hmm. But what about the nourishment for our mind, mm -hmm. the nutrition for our mind? Mm -hmm. And it's like not much importance is put on that. And that's why a lot of people deteriorate in terms of mental health because they wake up in the morning, they're probably waking up to a household, a broken home where people are arguing, shouting, or they're waking up to a home where it's like, there's stresses about money, bills. Mm -hmm. So for me, I knew I had to really like educate my mind and mm. listen to some s stimulating um, content like personal development. Um, Stephen R. Covey, the habits of highly effective people. Mm. I was listening to um, a lot of Jim Rohn. I was listening to a lot of John C. Maxwell. And um, yeah, so going back, like a lot of, t to answer your question, I was watching every single trader's content out mm. there just so I can see what awaits me, the life that awaits me. Yeah, so, so you're like prepping the mindset. Prepping not only the mindset, but it's like seeing them in drawdown, seeing them in big profits. Mm -hmm. I already lived that. I lived that through them. Okay. So for me, it's like, oh, minus this much in, in, in drawdown, no problem. I've seen this before. Mm. So it wasn't like entirely new to you. It was, nah. just, it was only in one sense into, uh, new to your to your personal experience, yes, but you've witnessed this experience with exactly. others and witnessed and heard yep. from their experience yep. how they handled it, or maybe even the maybe they even shared what yeah. they struggled with. Yes, exactly. So therefore, That's you why, be a bit more mindful of exactly. it. Exactly. That's why for me, I'm a student of the game. Mm. Like, um, like I say, a lot of traders come on here arrogant or whatever. Like, bro, I've learned from everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I've learned from everyone. Obviously, you can't combine people's strategies, but when I say learn, I mean like I've taken a leaf out of everyone's book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like I said to you, like Swaggy C, Q Banks, Lambo Raul, um, Astra at one point as well. Mm. Um, my guys, Mahad, Mahad FX, Zayn, Is he the ZM Capital. guy from uh, Egyptian? No, no, Mahad, Mahad Somali. Oh, is he Somali? Yeah, yeah Somali, sorry. Mahad FX. Uh, those guys, yeah, man, they're, they're young, but they're my goats. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like these big guys, Q Banks and all these people, like... I've learned a lot from these individuals. Yeah, and what traders yeah, like, never admit that yeah, exactly. someone's helped them. Oh, 100 percent. Everyone's yeah. helped me. It's very important to, I think, do that uh, because at the end of the day, that's how the industry should be. I think there's too much toxic, toxic nature, and yeah, I understand that people might be essentially competition in the sense that of if you have a course or a brand yeah. or something. But at the end of the day, it really makes no little difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like. It's, it's a, it's a, I always like to mention this statement, but it's like a, it's a statement that the Arabs say. Mm. They say, "Alam tara in the yam qadruhu ida qila in the amda min al asa." Can't you see how the sword loses value the moment it says that it's sharper than a stick? Mm. If you don't believe in your own source, and you have to tell people, "Oh, I'm better than this trader," yeah. or, or that my course is this and his course is that, yeah. you don't really like. You don't have to sell yourself. Let mm. people let draw people towards you by being your authentic self. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. And what's powerful. real mm. will sell. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah, and you know when it's legitimate, when it's real, it will just naturally be what it needs to be. You yeah. know, it will rise uh, naturally, and it will rise in an authentic manner. Yeah. Um. So I couldn't agree more. And like you said, it's definitely needed in terms of like shining people out. Because like, 
what I was going to say to you is how did you filter? Because I know a lot of people out there, you know, uh, a lot of my audience might not know you yet, yeah. but there'll be a lot of your audience who might not know me, for example. Yeah, I haven't really touched the YouTube scene in terms of yeah. trading apart from the trading side. Apart from the house tour. Yeah. 2023, I'm loading up. That's it. That's it. Loading and uh, no doubt though, when you were looking at these people like QBanks, like Swaggy C, you know, and I, uh, I haven't uh, spoken to Q personally, but I've spoken to Swaggy a few mm. times and, you know, great guy and really love what he does. Yeah. And yeah, great message. You know, yeah. he's always had a, the same message, regardless of lifestyle or yeah. growth. His message has always uh, remained the same, and his story is very inspiring yeah. as well. Um, and so, yeah, like, but when you look at these guys, and you're maybe researching their content, uh, whether it's just motivational stuff, lifestyle yeah. stuff, yeah. or trading, you'll get these haters or these people who will say like, "This guy's a scammer. This person's yeah. that." So, how did you filter that whilst you were going through that journey? I'll be honest with you. For me. There's two sides to every story. Mm. I've been in, in situations where people may, may think one side of me, mm -hmm. but the closer people to me only know the reality. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people say, oh my God, this guy's got how many students? They don't know I've actually given my course for free to over a thousand students. Mm. Like single mums get the course for free. Mm -hmm. You know, like people that can't afford it. We, 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 obviously not everybody, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's a business. The course is a business, mm -hmm. but we, we accommodate for people. Like we understand that like, I come from a broken home. Not bro Sorry, I come from a broken financial background. Mm -hmm. Not broken home, my mum and dad were around. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna yeah, they're gonna, yeah. get mad. Um, I come from a very like bad financial background. So mm -hmm. I understand life, mm -hmm. I understand cost of living, mm -hmm. etc. But at the same time, you, do, you don't wanna put yourself in a scenario where you're blaming cost of living on not trying to start a business, course, not yeah. trying to better yourself, mm -hmm. okay? We understand, okay, situation is bad. I was in that situation as well myself, mm -hmm. um, but you gotta try, and you'll try your best to find a way out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so people won't know, people just see, yeah, this person is selling a course, whatever, but they don't know, like, my course is 499, mm -hmm. one-time fee. It's at a very affordable price, it's not too crazy, mm -hmm. especially you know what the kind of figures people charge in the forex industry, bro. Yeah. 499, one-time fee no strings attached after that you're in a 24-hour discord group your your questions get answered straight away mm -hmm. yeah there's there's um, uh, a discord uh, trading questions tab mm -hmm. there is a general chat where you can network with other students and mm -hmm. speak generally there's something that's, that's called trading talks so you can come on discord and put your video on, you know, on your mic and revise mm -hmm. practice with other students yeah you know um, i do one-to-one -one calls included with that price. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the more it grows, the more the one-to-ones will become in small groups, etc. because yeah. I can't do every single person. Yeah. I'm only one man. Um, um, I do random, like, for example, if I was to show you that like, random calls every two days, sometimes every day or so, where I say I'm jumping on and I'm helping anybody. So you can see here, for example, this was yesterday, congrats. These are funded students. One, two, three, four, six. I pay for six students mm. funded exams. Um, for example, here. This is my event. Uh, let me just show you, for example, here. Um, here we are. I'll be on Zoom right now helping anyone who has questions or is stuck on the topic. Feel free to pop in, ask whatever you need help with. Yeah. Again, day before, I'll be on Zoom. 10 minutes helping anyone. Feel free to pop in. Day before, I'll be on Zoom later. Every, like, every day, every two days, mm. I'm there. People, and that's why I feel like I'm trying to create the trust in an industry that has a very bad stigma. Mm. And when people see, what? Discord, one-to-ones, mentorship, free monthly workshops, Mm. Every month, where I can come and see you personally and speak to you, and you don't charge no ticket, no no fees for no tickets. Mm. You don't upsell anything at the event. We're expecting like a little curveball at the end, a little yeah. catch. There's no catch. What's going on here? And that's what the four nine nine comes with, you know. So for me, that's always what I wanted to be. You can't be the best, but mm. you can be the best at being better. Mm. So I'm not here trying to say yeah, I'm the guy. Come to me. So there's there's many goats like people like a guy called IC. I've never studied from him personally, never. Mm -hmm. But I understand that people that I've studied from may have studied from him. Mm -hmm. So there's a guy called ICT, there's Men FX, for example, mm. all these guys that like Q Banks, whatever, like I get it. Like th these are the goats of the industry, for example, to yeah. some people. For me, I'm not trying to be a goat. I'm trying to do my thing, stay in my lane. I'm not trying to get involved in no drama. Mm -hmm. It's doing me, focusing on my students. And that's it, bro. That's it. Like if you think there's a catch, whatever, then Come and take a look yourself. Well, that's just how it works, isn't it? The nature of the game is that you know when you try to put yourself out there, because yeah. even like with yourself, you are on social media now. You're not like you know not like you're on there every single day, yeah. 24 hours a day or anything. But you know you've been on social media before the trading journey, yeah. you know. And knowing now that how old you are, yeah, yeah. 
that must have been, you must have been in your teenage years then, Yeah, like right? 17, 18. Yeah, so like, how did you have that confidence? Because I know that I, when I was that age, I wanted to do stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just always let the fear of other people's opinions and yeah. their thoughts of me hold yeah. me back. So I st stopped it for so long. Yeah. You know, but you put yourself out there. Was there a little struggle there? Or? Nah, to be honest with you, when I was younger, I've always been used to the camera. I've always mm -hmm. been in front of the camera. I used okay. to pick up like video cameras mm -hmm. and record myself doing nonsense from a young age, running around in nappies. Like <laughs> my mom's got cassettes and stuff. But um, yeah, like when I was younger, I used to do music. Yeah. So I was always used to like stage. I mm -hmm. used to perform and stuff and make music and release it, music videos and stuff. And I stopped doing that due to, um, a few things but then yeah after that uh, yeah I've just always been I've always been used to the camera mm. very like I like to speak to people outgoing mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty much what, what it is yeah then in terms of like slowing that down and stopping that not the the music side but generally the social media side mm. um, you know was that a choice in terms of when you were doing that solitude yeah yeah because for me it's like I've got all these followers but I'm broke mm. this doesn't make sense and what was that like then because obviously everyone's perception even now, even to this day, uh, is you got followers, you must be rich. No, no, the thing is, the thing with me, it's like my followers know. I've always, you know, I've documented my entire journey. Mm. Like I'll go to the ATM on my Snapchat, on my Instagram, and be like, hey guys, look at my bank account. It's minus six pounds. Mm. But I swear to God, I'm going to make it. Mm. I'll send you clips of it after you yeah, make send it, me, podcast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like my bank account, you know, me tapping in my, tapping my Oyster card and it's not working and the train, the train, uh, um, what are they called? Train wardens, whatever they are. Yeah. He's telling me, if you ain't got money, just say, mate. <laughs> I'm like to him, yeah, bro, I ain't got money. Like, sorry, I gotta go do something. Like, he, then he lets me through. Like, getting humbled. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, mm. I showed all of that on my Snapchat. And you guys will see, like, I'll put it up here. So, that's why I say, like, you can't walk in on this chapter of my life and say, why is this guy living flashy? Why is... I showed everybody my vision board. I was jotting down like my notes and I told people, watch, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be here. Obviously success is what you deem it to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've, I'm, I'm content with where I'm at. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say I'm successful, but I'm content with where I'm at, yeah? Um, but yeah, the followers thing is like, I've always kept it genuine. I feel like that's why I've got such a strong bond with people mm -hmm. uh, that know me, that have been following me because I've kept it real. Mm -hmm. Showed them my down days. Showed them the times where I was depressed and used to tell them, look, man, right now, this is what I'm going through. But if anyone's going through this, just keep going, keep, keep pushing, find something that gives you purpose and drive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, that's why you can't, like, if somebody starts speaking on me, mm -hmm. I know you haven't been around. Yeah. Because if you've been around, you would have seen me mm -hmm. upload every single day of me just trying to figure out life and yeah. grinding out and showing people the reality that I'm broke now, mm -hmm. but watch, I'm going to show you guys that if you work every single day, mm -hmm. you will achieve your goals. And I've done it. To be honest with you, you know, and it's it's amazing to do. And I think that the documentation side, I feel like some people get trapped in trading nowadays where they're trying to, as we talked about, you know, do the solitude and then come back after in one sense. But I feel like nowadays, most people, whilst they're trying to learn and trying to add value to others, mm. and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like get the value, yeah. then from your value, you can yes, share. Exactly. Um, but in terms of documenting your journey, that's two different things. Yeah. You know, trying to provide value and then documenting your journey yeah. so that later you can reflect yeah. and other people can then mm -hmm. see too. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a beautiful thing because I had done that, uh, but then I lost this Instagram page, which is a long story. But um, even then, it's, it's such an incredible thing to be able to look back on and realize, ah, yeah. you know, here's that moment, yeah. here's that moment. And, um, you know, when you were going through that period, then you've, you've got this following. And uh, the success, because even though you'd stopped the music, it was successful. You were yeah. very successful at yeah. it. Um, based on that, though, was you know, was that the first time you had sort of had something successful happen to you? You know, in terms whether it's entrepreneurship or generally, is that the first sort of taste of some form of success? Uh, uh, what exactly? Uh, like the growing of the followership and the music career and the um, way that was going. I wouldn't really time. call that success, but in terms of. The following, mm. the, it's not really, bro, I'm not famous. Like, I've got 40K followers, 50K, whatever mm. it may be. Uh, um, it's like it's relative. You know? Yeah, it's relative. There'll be people I, out there who are grafting right yeah, now Yeah, yeah, of course. There, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But um, what I mean is, though, because uh, obviously, as you said, it's like, would we deem that success or not? Yeah. But what I mean is, it's hard work, and there's the sort of result Results. of that hard work. Yeah, yeah, work, of course, right? yeah. So after seeing that, yeah, mm. it made me think, okay, cool. This is my first taste that something going right yeah. yeah so was that something then then you were able to apply to anything else that you were felt passionate 100%. about yes exactly because then you've seen hey if i work hard at something yeah. i can you know here's a result at yeah. the end of it exactly that incredible yeah man yeah because then it must have been a hard choice then to be able to step away and and focus on something else mm. or was it easy for you trading mm -hmm. very easy for me mm -hmm. not not trading as in like <laughs> yeah. focusing people are gonna take yeah, that out yeah, now yeah, yeah. <laughs> as in like 
me leaving whatever it is and focusing on trading, yeah, yeah. I found it was it was a smooth transition. It was a smooth uh, transition and I just developed passion for it mm -hmm. very, very quickly. And yeah. And what was it in terms of like the teaching, what was the drive and sort of motivation behind that then? I didn't I didn't have the drive and motivation to teach. Mm. In fact I actually doubted myself. One of my one of my very good friends actually told me you should mm. because I taught my two little brothers. Oh nice. Yeah, and they're now funded and whatever like they're doing their thing. Mm -hmm. One of them's taking an exam uh I think he passed phase one right now. Mm -hmm. And my my two little brothers after teaching them and um I kind of realized, okay, cool, if this works, and I've tested it on my own family. Mm -hmm. No one can tell me anything because I've tried it with my family first. Mm -hmm. If I was putting anyone in a detrimental position, it would yeah. not be my family. Yeah, of course. You get yeah. it? So I've tested it on my family and it worked. And I was in a bubble for a very long time because this is this, this another thing. People think, oh, yeah, courses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, my course started in like June, mm -hmm. July, whatever it was, yeah. I've been floating profits of like 10k a day or like 5k a day or 20 and i have good days at 50k sometimes in a day 40k 30k whatever it may be since like november mm -hmm. october sorry october so it's like from october november december january february march april may june that's what nine months of me making crazy profits by myself mm -hmm. then saying okay if i can do this consistently for nine months let me now utilize a business and monetize my knowledge that I've got. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, everybody has a course. Like I said, I don't think my. If you, I'm not here to tell you my course is the best and I'm the best, whatever. But I know that my course is one of the best courses to take somebody from absolutely zero to hero. Mm -hmm. As I teach things like what's a pip, what is a candle. You teach the basics exactly. Yeah. Then I take them through, for example, um, what the beginning, the, the, the beginner side of trading is. Mm -hmm. And why we avoid certain things like entering early, different types of liquidity, etc., mm -hmm. and then to the advanced stages of you know. So it's like it's very hard to find a course that's going to teach you from the absolute basic. There's there's many, obviously there's many, but I mean like it's very concise. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people like about my course is that it's very short, it's very concise, it's very to the point. And then the real learning takes place when you go on Discord and you watch all of the Zoom calls that I've done, mm -hmm. all the back, uh, all the all the uh, not backlog, but all the uh, Zoom sessions from yeah. the past, you mm -hmm. watch that again and then you come on the one-to-ones and you come on the mentorship and you come to the live events and you're able to ask in person and things like that of that nature. So yeah, like of course, course money is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a business that at the end of the day, you know, if somebody was doing maths tuition, you'd pay the guy to teach you maths. Mm -hmm. So why aren't you going to pay a guy to teach you how to trade, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's like people say, oh yeah, but uh, a lot of traders make course money. It's like, it's like me saying to you, you know, if personal trainers are in shape, why do they charge to be in shape? Mm -hmm. Why do they charge you for you to get a dream body of yours? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people say, yeah, it's different, but that's not money making. But that's like me saying to you, okay, cool. If that's not the same, then why can't they just get about their day, get about their life? They're in shape. That's mm -hmm. it. Be in shape for yourself. Yeah. Don't teach someone how to be in shape. So it's like, but they say, oh, yeah, just make money for yourself. Don't teach people how to make money. That's essentially mm -hmm. what you're saying. But you don't want to say it because you look like a hater. Mm. But yeah, course money is amazing. It's a business at the end of the day. We've got a market. If if this is my life or I'm on holiday, if this is my actual car and this is my house, I would obviously snap whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Even th the same way I was snapping when I was broke, showing my bank account on minus six pounds. Yeah. The same way I was showing me depressed, me struggling, me not even having money to get a haircut. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If this is my life now and I'm snapping it, you just walked in on this chapter, you're going to think, why is the guy flashing a lifestyle like yeah but in reality it's just it's just my life now mm -hmm. you know what i'm trying to say no yeah i do i do and I actually it's a different perspective to think about because uh it's definitely good when people have documented that journey yeah. and that's you know so you see a to z you yeah. know and as you say it's very easy for people to just look at what's happening right now yeah. or what's being shown right now and think that's it this is what this guy's all about and i understand it to one degree because of obviously you know other people but then you uh, you should never judge you know one person's character on based on another person's yeah. character you know it doesn't make sense um, so definitely you know, definitely and at the end of the day as you say in terms of courses for example 
you know, at the end of the day, people forget it's not easy. If you're going to run an actual course, yeah. you know, if you're actually going to do it properly yeah. and right, yeah, it's yeah. far from easy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. It takes so much time and effort and there's so much that goes behind it if you're going to do it properly and you're actually trying to achieve results yeah. for, for people. Um, so to assume that people think, oh, yeah, no, it's easy money or you're just trying to do it for the money. Yeah. At the end of the day, the amount of time and energy that goes into it, as you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not easy. And we've got, we've got like very, very like experienced traders as well on here. Mm -hmm. You can see on the Discord. As we're speaking on the podcast, mm -hmm. people, are you, who's typing? Oh, yeah, yeah. He says your room university is typing. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's questions get answered. Yeah. Everybody who has a question gets answered. Every single person. That's it. So you put the infrastructure in place as well. And then, in place. you know, you, you have to pay those people to yeah. do that. It's not like they're going to do it for and it's free. And like, it's, it's like, it's my friend. He's been trading for five, six years. We mm -hmm. do this together, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, like it's, if I feel like if you build a trustworthy community where people are getting support. Yeah. People, people can see the truth yeah. from being fake you know that's it yeah and it will always uh, you know if someone's fake it will always come around it, you know it never lasts forever yeah. that's why I always say if someone is fake and not genuine it will never last forever and you know as I think there was a term that we mentioned on the, one of the recent podcasts like there's an FX graveyard of yeah. it's like uh, uh, what did we mention funding talent Yeah. you know they were not genuine yeah. and now they're gone yeah. you know and, yeah. and anyone who isn't genuine will not have that longevity 100%. you know because it and, and normally they don't even have any form of jevity for a long period of time either yeah. so no it's incredible it's absolutely incredible and in terms of uh you know the sort of goals now i think we get we're coming towards the end so this is where i do like the quick fire questions okay. you know I just try and think of questions off the top of my head yeah. and then. i'm very bad at general knowledge by the way no no it's not like that no. okay. <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine tell me where this country is i got is. kicked out bro <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's more trading related than okay, uh, what we've been uh, discussing but okay. so like you mentioned about having that you know that consistency and you know, big days you know yeah. consistently but in that period of time, did you face losses as well during that period? During the big days? Yeah. So if I have a big day, for example, mm -hmm. I say to myself, I'm willing to lose this much. If I lose this much, I'm taking a break mm -hmm. and enjoying the profits. So okay. if I have a big day, for example, 40K, 50K, 30K, whatever it may be, I'll say to myself, if, if I lose, I don't know, if I lose 3K or 4K, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it a day mm -hmm. and I'm going to go enjoy. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So for now, is it, is it like a, a relative... Uh, levels to what you, what you did. So I'm imagining obviously the prop firms allows you to scale. Yeah. So obviously when you're doing personal accounts, it might have been say 500 or 1,000 or yeah. a few thousand. Um, What's that in terms of what? In terms of like your account size, right? Uh, oh, is it now? No, no, back oh, then. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, imagine yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After all we were talking about, oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're flipping the account yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 I mean uh, back then when the consistency was forming, yeah. right? But then obviously you came across prop firms, yeah. so that would allow you to scale. Yeah, exactly. But um, Obviously, I'm guessing the profits, did they go, were they straight into the sort of 20, 30K or did it, was it scaled like, you know, 2, 3K and no, then no, 5K I, I and went 10K? straight for, Like I said to you, I, my mind was already conditioned by mm. watching people make big money. Mm -hmm. And because of the fund and talent situation, it's like, I already know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Because before that trade went into profit, I was in drawdown. Mm -hmm. So I know what it feels like to be in drawdown for a long time. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be in profit for a long time. So for me, the profits that I was making was was big profits mm -hmm. not straight away because like i said it took time to of get course, there yeah but because I, my mind was consuming so much of this content online of mm -hmm. you know just holding your trade trust your analysis you know and q bank said something that stood out to me and he said obviously take this with a pinch of salt if you don't understand trading okay mm -hmm. but if you understand trading you know what he means he said your lot size is going to be a reflection of what you're going to be able to pay for mm. okay you see, and that really stuck with me because he said, if your lot size is like what one lot, whatever it is, it's good, but you only have enough to pay for your bills mm. and a little bit extra to, mm. to live a little bit, you know? So did that kind of push you to, you know, want to not over risk, but yeah. essentially be get comfortable? Yes, and then with these I, never, I never over risk, mm. never over risk, never ever, because I learned the hard way, like I said to you, by, by blowing accounts. Yeah. Like if, you have, if a person doesn't learn, then this person is just deluded, mm. you know? But I would say the American side of the trading industry on YouTube, on they definitely helped me in terms of like understanding the possibilities of how much you can really make mm. and how you can risk correctly mm -hmm. with, you know, a bigger lot size to what average UK traders use and whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So was it more like rather than pushing you to over risk or anything, it was more like motivating you to get to a certain level, you know, yes. motivating you to get used to and yeah. get accustomed quickly yeah. rather than, you know, going a, a much slower route of, you know, using, like you said, the beginning was yes. flipping accounts. Bro, 0 0.05 lot size, mm -hmm. 0 0.010, 0 0.015, 0 0.020, 0 0.025, then moved up to a standard lot, mm -hmm. two lots, three lots, four lots, 
five lots, maybe like a 5.5. I had to go back down to two lots. Losses go back to 0.75 lots mm. and then go back up again. 10 lots, 12 lots, to the 30 lots, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So it was adjusting to those levels. Yes, then. exactly. Perfect. And then let me think quick fire question. What we got? I had one in mind. It's, it's slipped me now. Um, Slippage. <laughs> Slippage. <laughs> oh man! You, know, you actually, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, so in MFF, yeah. that's one of the feedback that I hear. So, yeah. in terms of when you are trading, are you going for you know MFF? Normally, have been known to have a bit of uh, higher slippage. One of my friends actually lost his account due to slippage, really? and it stopped him out of the next available stop loss, oh, wow. which was like fifteen minus fifteen k, and the stop loss was only like what eight hundred pounds. So massive slippage. Yeah, and was, was there some sort of news that news, made? Yeah, news, news. Yeah, always. News, yeah. So, um, how do you mitigate that? Is it something you kind news. of? Yeah, you don't trade news. I don't yeah. trade news. And number one, like as in, if I will only hold through news if I'm already in the position from way before. Mm. So you have a chance to maybe move break even or yeah, just feel a uh, bit more comfortable. I wouldn't really move break even. Mm. But it's like I've already accepted the risk anyway. Okay. But I've never really personally experienced like slippage mm. with MFF. Okay. That's but, good. <laughs> You're lucky. Yeah, no, yeah, I've never. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. And then, in terms of uh, sort of, you know, we talked about goals next, so longevity. Is that are you sort of laying the foundations outside of trading then, or is that uh, within trading as well? Uh, with, outside of trading as well, like I said to you, like I'm trying to move countries, mm. I'm trying to settle down, get married, um, and just. I'm thinking more like investments or anything like that. Investment, yeah, for sure. Like like I said to you, I'm trying to move to Dubai, mm. and Dubai is definitely a place that I'll be looking to. Invest you want to invest in, there? Yeah, yeah, invest in Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, also, like digital things as well mm -hmm. um, uh, for example like clothing lines I've got people that I'm in talks with some Incredible. Like young people that are starting a club like they've already started the clothing line that I believe mm. in oh, okay. to invest in them like that mm. um, yeah like I'm trying to really diversify and I'm always open for conversations basically mm -hmm. yeah man Definitely, sure. no it's incredible to hear and you know in terms of like when I was looking at your um, uh, event yesterday yeah Obviously, you're quite young, yeah. and then I feel like your audience, or based on what I saw, it was like they're quite young as well. Yeah. And how do you find that? Do you find that they kind of see you as a form of inspiration? I would imagine. Yeah. What's so, possible? Yeah. So my my audience range is between like the ages of eighteen to twenty four. Mm -hmm. Between so roughly similar age to me. Yeah. yeah? Um, however, I do have like some older students. For example, like I've got single mums on there. Mm -hmm. I've got like dads on there mm -hmm. i've got people like that in their 30s 40s on there but the overall you're going to attract who you are in it of course so yeah. at the end of the day it's like um for me uh, right now at the stage of my life i'm attracting people my age mm -hmm. youngers youth etc um so some of them yeah some of them look up to me in the form of inspiration and a lot of people tell me like the only reason why we're learning with you is because like we feel a connection with you and mm -hmm. always keep it real and you don't like sugarcoat anything because you can pull up any of my videos. Never once have I said, join Yerimi University if you want to get rich mm -hmm. or if you want to flip money or signals. I don't give signals. I don't give financial advice. Like I've never said, you're going to get rich quick from this. Mm -hmm. I never said, yeah, join this after three months and yeah, you're going to see results. It's subjective to each person and trading is a long, long, long road, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like the transparency, because everything that I've said I've said what would push somebody away. Mm. And I said, okay, cool, this guy's being truthful. Okay, yeah. So it's like you develop that trust with them. Awesome. So yeah, that's, I feel like that's why um, a lot of people are my age, mm -hmm. et cetera. But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a, also a lot of people like, hold on, like, there's a lot. There are, yeah, no, it is. A, at the end of the day with trading, it is so wide range and yeah. worldwide. And there isn't really, there's not, the thing with trading is there's not like a, a textbook image of a yeah. trader. You know, anyone could be a trader, mm -hmm. but not everyone should be a trader is what I always like to say. Yeah. And um yeah. we'll just wrap up here I've got one last question for you then so this is the one that everyone uh, sort of sends to me which is if you were to send a message to that person going through those dark times what would it be that you would say you know like what would what advice would you give to yourself if you were going through those hard times now or if you were able to speak to that person I would say don't give up on yourself mm -hmm. and imagine what the future you would think if they look back and you gave up right mm -hmm. now you don't know what's awaiting you. Trust me, you do not know what's awaiting you. You could be right at the exponential curve of when your life is about to change and give up. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's awaiting you. Literally, your life can change. Your life can flip. The dynamic can change. You must become 
the odd one in your family that changes the circumstances that provides for your family to help your mum, help your dad, help your siblings, help your family. You can be that person. Just don't stop. Mm. Do not stop. And this is this is, in my opinion, what trading is about. If you stop, you will fail. Mm -hmm. You only fail. You only you you will only fail if you stop. Definitely, definitely. And um, you know, it's that momentum. It's allowing that momentum to build and that consistency to form. And I couldn't agree more. Well, it's been a pleasure, brother. I think we're we're literally getting shoved out yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's normally what happens, but no. I uh, appreciate you coming down. Thank it was absolute my pleasure. My, my guy, my appreciate guy. you, brother. And uh, your links will be in the description below, so make yeah. sure you check that out. And otherwise, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all your support. Until next time. Take care.